at the point that I learned about Nestle's intention of establishing a bottling plant here in Michigan, I thought, Nestle here in the heart of our state, bottling water, this is, this is a big one. They're pumping upwards of 450 gallons per minute. And what that means in ecological terms is that streams are lowering, that what used to be bodies of water are turning into mudflats, lake levels are dropping in the vicinity of this pumping site. Adding insult to injury is the fact that Nestle Corporation doesn't pay one cent for the water that they extract. And they're making, it's speculated, upwards of $1.8 million a day in profits off of that water, which belongs to all of us. So here we are in Michigan. You got a company that wants to pump water out of a stream system, all right? It doesn't own the water. It has a right to use the water like other landowners. So the question is, does their right to use mean they have a right to put it in a bottle and claim ownership and sell it? That was the basic question. We asked for a moratorium and said, give the people more time to research this, to find out, is this what the community wants? And the township officials basically said, we know what's best. When citizens hear about a project, you can be sure the company's been there for at least a year already. They've talked with everybody they need to talk to. They've been given the green light informally. Nestle Corporation received $10 million in tax abatements over 10 years. So not only are they not paying for the water itself, but they're not even contributing to the local tax base of that community. And the DNR uh, leased that property to them for 99 years for $63,000. Nothing. And you see these semi-trucks traveling in one right after the other to pick up this water which has been pumped from the ground, has traveled through 12 miles of stainless steel pipe. They've treated it with chemicals. They've put it in plastic bottles, which are a non-renewable resource. They're polluting our watersheds the moment you've consumed the water. And I'm sure a lot of it will end up right back up here because they sell Ice Mountain in the area. So it's ludicrous. They make scads of money giving our water back to us. They're being sued in five states. In Zephyr Hills, they took so much water that there are huge sinkholes where the land is sinking. And I live on a farm, and I don't want my little stream to disappear, and they want to put more wells up in Everett. My wife's sister, when they were doing her testing last year, she ran out of water at that time when they were doing her seven-day tests and four-day tests. And my neighbor next to me is almost out of water, and. Uh, all of this started after they started testing their wells. We're fighting this battle, this David and Goliath battle. We are having to have garage sales and bake sales and concerts and all kinds of little fundraisers. is now in session. The Honorable Lawrence Seabrook presides. You may be seated. The UN is saying in their reports, by the year 2020, we're going to have half the world's population without adequate water. By God, they're coming after Michigan's water. When Nestle came into Michigan, they said, we're a good corporate citizen. We're not going to hurt anything. We're responsible. During the trial, the company kept pumping during a, a season of drought. Any of the predicted reductions in flow and dead stream will have absolutely no effect on that ecosystem. The stream area in front of one of the client's homes was basically a mud flat. I cross-examined the plant manager and I said look at these pictures there's a mud flat here don't you think you ought to stop pumping they kept pumping even then some of these small channels that flow into the lake from this these springs along the north shore almost stopped flowing the reality was no matter what they said there was significant adverse impact and they kept pumping we had a petition drive and a couple of weeks later citizens are calling me and saying Someone knocked on my door, and it was a private investigator. They even hired a firm that came around and went to people's doors, knocked on their door and said, did you sign a petition? And, and confronted these older folks. What we did was we said, let's go back in time and look at who owned the water a 1,000 years ago in Rome. And how has the civil law in Europe and, and in other cultures handled 
this question of water ownership and use. And what we found was that water has always had a public aspect to it. This water has always been considered not owned by anybody. I mean, you know, today we think, well, isn't that profound? It's not profound at all. I mean, that, that's just common sense. You look at the sun, do you own the sun? Water is this transient gift on Earth for life, moving and flowing. And inherent in its transient nature is the idea of commons, things that are not transient, you know, like this pen, okay? You can pick up and own. Things that are transient, you don't own. The judge ruled, he simply said, look, a diversion of water for selling somewhere else that diminishes the flow or lake, the integrity of this flow of water is unlawful. It cannot be done. They do not have the property right to do it. And he told him to turn off the pumps. This is what happened, you know, this is 1854. The American Indian chief of Seattle replies to an offer from the white government of the United States to buy, within quotation, to buy a large area of Indian land. How can you buy or sell the sky, the warmth of the land? The idea is strange to us. If you do not own the freshness of the air and the sparkle of the water, how can you buy them? You don't own them. Every part of this earth is sacred to my people. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every humming insect is holy in the memory and experience of my people. This beautiful earth is the mother of the red man. We are part of the earth and it is part of us. The rivers are our brothers. We give the rivers the kindness we would give to any brother. But the white man does not understand our ways. He is a stranger who takes from the land whatever he needs. The earth is not his brother but his enemy. And when he has conquered it, he moves on. He kidnaps the earth from his children and he does not care. I do not know. Our ways are different from your ways. <laughs> 